Hello, everyone. Hey there, Mark. Great to see you again. <laughs> Hi, Nathan. So, uh, Hello. So uh, we are bi-locating today. So I'm here in uh, North Carolina, and Mark is well on the other side of the world. Where are you today, Mark? Uh, today I'm close to West Brim, called a little a village city, uh, Schumacher. Very nice. We have a well, beautiful building. Oops. We have a beautiful <laughs> castle. We have a beautiful castle. So if you look at this right. place. That's right. So that's the place you recently moved when you moved away from Budapest um, prior to the pandemic. Yes, yes. And I'm still yep. working in Budapest. So I'm traveling, uh, commuting a lot. Uh, so that's uh, I kept I kept everything there. So there it's a connection. It's an ongoing process. All right. Well, we got you here today because um, we've got another slingshot in the Selgin series here, one that folks have been waiting on a long, long time, the uh, the cleaver. So people have been asking for this one for ages. So this is a cleaver I got from use several years ago um, with my siding mechanism there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, folks they, folks wanted to see the, uh, the cleaver in production, so we've got it. So I'm going to kind of leave it up to you, but here we go. This is the original. This is the one that... Uh, one yep. my heart um awesome slingshot but you made it even cooler so here it is so uh integrated clips um ambidextrous and in integrated clips with a sight very cool but um you're the designer tell us about it mark okay uh so there are different uh, design methods and um usually i have something in mind or a requirement or something that uh, needs to be solved but this time it was uh, more like an inspiration. So I wanted to sketch up something and uh, go with that sketch and keep it, uh, keep it quite natural to kind of a human movement. So this was the whole thing was started with an outline. I had, I had an idea in mind uh, and that um, uh, I just came back after Italy in 2018 and um, uh, I've sh I was shooting TTF there and uh, I had a couple, uh, not issues, but experience. I've collected some experience and thoughts and wanted to uh, update uh, my collection uh, with that. So I started to have drawing up um, shapes and outlines with more, uh, with more ergonomics, a more curvy layout that offers a little bit more contact with the hand. And uh, it's not just about the contact to increase the surface to have a kind of a better grip, but it was also about how to maintain control when the muscles are relatively relaxed. So this is a common issue for me uh, to maintain and try to achieve a somewhat similar uh, strength of grip that gives enough control, but it's not overly... Uh, um, forced uh, and that way just throws off the shots especially when the, when the release is happening so uh, if there's too much muscle tension that can um, disturb the things um, so I collected my thoughts and um, uh, at first it was just an experimentation and uh, printed it sculpted it uh, and it was completely it's completely off at the first time uh, but uh, I was really curious that what happens if I exactly do the outline as it is and not just not, not trying to correct first because oftentimes if if uh, if in design if you make corrections too early you are deciding on something that's not proven to be wrong and uh, this kind of a censorship of the design it's it's really can hinder the the whole evolution and the development of the project so um, I've spent the time with it, even if it was not perfect, and then made another version. And these iterations led to what you have here today. So uh, I've tried to make it bigger, make it smaller, longer handle, all these variations, and just going out, shooting, and see if the results are talking to me or not. And um, as I've shot, uh, these these um, iterations are allowed to to um, validate if a concept is good or not. So my biggest concern was um, most of the TTF shooters are are quite thick, uh, 3D shaped. Let, let us call it. Everybody calls it that way. And uh, 
I wanted to create something that's a little bit more uh, laid back, a little bit more uh, slimmer, but still offers great control with thumb support. Um, and uh, and it was not it's not a common uh, thing with TTFs. I think most of the frames are are flowing that way when you have where you create a finger web and it's it's fairly uh, big. So. I had the question that okay, what's going on? We have the supporting fingers, but what's going on with the with the rest of the fingers, and the pinky, the pinky hole, and all that concept is is uh, it's not new, it was there. But what happens with these two fingers, uh, with the ring finger and um and the middle finger, and the, that that these fingers can really feel the orientation when you are performing the shot. Those those fingers can really make a difference when you're holding and when you're under tension, because they are not bearing a load. So your your front finger is bearing a load. Your pinky is actually creating an, an uh, uh, antagonist uh, movement, and you have these two. And the way you're placing on a slingshot and the way you are adding force or not, that can just make tiny corrections. And these are not conscious corrections. So if you practice enough with a typical frame, and this is why it took so much time because you, you have to build up this kind of a sense because by default, it's not there. You're just just taking it as granted that, okay, I have a good rip and that's it. But when you recognize that, okay, I need a, I need a little bit more control where I place my fingers, does it change, does it, ma does it matter? And uh, then uh, I started to recognize, okay, and this is why this handle shape was uh, was created that way. And this is why this this whole concept coming up that you can place your finger here and this little slope allows you to, to feel how much it pulls. And that way you can make corrections uh, in, in a subconscious way. So as you're lifting up and holding on the target, when once you're achieved the target position, then you right away you will notice. Okay, I'm this much or that much off, so that that helped. That helped a lot. You, you're shooting this frame a lot. What is your what is your experience with it? Yeah, so I, I would have to agree. This is the first time I've heard you uh, explain it in such terms. But my experience is absolutely in line with what you're communicating there. What I found most. Um, joyful about this this particular slingshot is its repeatability um i'm able to consistently be on target and now that you're communicating the antagonistic movement with the pinky finger and uh the, the movement of these two fingers uh it makes perfect sense because i'm absolutely locked into the same position same hand hold um with this slingshot there's no variability from my hand once i'm locked in i am there and that of course translates to a better consistent shooting experience um, yeah, I've been shooting this one for quite some time, um, and whether I shoot it consistently or pick it up after a few months of not shooting it, I'm back on back on target really quickly with this one. So this one is always on the bench um, of the few slingshots that I have that are in my lineup uh, next to my, my shooting range, and I've always enjoyed shooting this one. One thing I wanted to mention was, um, you know, the way you've got all these holes here, people are probably going to ask, what are all these different holes? Um, designed for and I, th this is you know what you communicated to me but a, a, a type of lanyard but what this gives me is another instance uh, a sensation just having this come across the top of my palm um, of telling me that I'm locked in I'm in the correct position just another um, instance of uh, understanding that I'm ready to shoot uh, so yes yeah, if you could speak to that you know what what you had in mind with all of these, these shapes here. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, there are plenty of options uh, to mount the lanyard. And um, I've tried many. And uh, I spent some time because in the early days, everybody was talking about safety and you're, you're holding the lanyard with safety. But, but lanyard is much more than that. Lanyard is, uh, is a way to control your slingshot. And uh, there's another thing. And this was the, the the first thing that came in mind. When you're building, you're building up consistency and the consistency is not starting at the moment when you're shooting. It starts when you are just present at the range. That is, the, you, you have a whole mindset, you have um, habits, you don't even recognize, but you pick up 
the way you put the, the slingshot in your bag or hand or pocket or the, the, the orientation where you like to hold your ammo, uh, everything is coming up. And the lanyard, as you are just engaging it, as you're just sliding in your hands, that, that already uh, gives you a mental preparation. Okay, now I'm sliding in and uh, this is the amount I'm sliding in. And even a tiny change with that, it can change the whole feeling of it. If you want to make it more tighter, like I have, I have to force my hand into it. It will, it will give you the feeling. Okay, now I have absolute control on this. Uh, or if you want to use as a leverage, because you are supporting that much and you're pushing away the slingshot, then you can use these two end holes, and uh, that creates a much more natural hook around your wrist uh, and that natural hook because the hook is not um not so uh, where is it oh i have i have a lanyard piece so if the hook is mounted uh with a gap between this will add much more stability and this is why we have the two holes in here okay so it's not not allows as much rotation the other thing is the the hook at the bottom so this one it allows you and here's the here's the other one in the middle that allows you to to create a uh, kind of a, a strip for your uh, uh, thumb so just for the thumb uh, and, and it allows you to if you have a problem with slipping or you want to learn for example this is another problem sometimes if you're changing your shooting methods for whatever reason for example your uh, different band set and then you have to change up a few things. It takes time to remove an old habit. And when you have a new a way to hold your slingshot just by using the different layout of the lanyard, it can help you to, okay, catching up with that and just, just use it as an aid. Um, so it has a lot of purposes. Um, I, I don't want to sound so scientific, but uh, these, these thoughts are just uh, going back and forth all the time. Um, some people will not ever use all these functions, but uh, for some, they will find, I'm sure, that, okay, there is there's a, uh, a good point here and there. Yeah, so you can really tell that this slingshot was designed from the ground up for the, the experience of interacting. Well, I mean, all of your models, obviously, um, when you interact with them, when you touch them, you feel their intentionality. But this one's taking it up a, another step, and I really like this. I'm looking forward to... Um, seeing what other users find like the the thumb i guess i saw the thumb option there but i'm going to try that one immediately um just to get that another point of engagement across the thumb just to see what it feels like that's genius um you know i'm learning something about this model and i've been working with you on it for quite some time now so <laughs> yes this is great so um yeah so just to tell folks a little bit more about it so this one is a uh, cnc machined this is not an injection molded model so solid billet, um, an absolute chunk of a slingshot. Um, I don't have the weight. We'll get those weights up for you on the um, product page. But um, yeah, all, all aluminum uh, be offered in two colors. So the gunmetal with uh, the black clips and then all black. So black body with uh, black clips. And of course, you can find those at Simple Shot. Um, one thing that I noticed that I really enjoyed, just you've gotten uh, quite good with integrating fiber in a way that makes it durable and also gathers a lot of light. So um, the Scout X was uh, a great example of that. I think this one's even better. Um, let's see if I have a tool here to take this apart. Um, just the way the fiber attaches is quite ingenious, very simple but inelegant. But um, like what you did there, Mark, that was very clever. Also like the use of these really slick fasteners here. Uh, could you tell us just right off, I'm sure you got it off the top of your head here, what's the fork width and the, um, the widths of the, uh, the tie-in points? Uh, the, uh, the, whole, the overall oh. is 100 millimeters, okay. uh, and uh, the tip width is uh, 24, if I remember correctly, so that version. Okay. So yeah, very very capable of accommodating heavy bands. Um, but yeah, here's here's the clip itself. So this is the back side of it. So the the fiber actually inserts from the back, comes around. So it's it's very well protected. Um, 
So if you want to drop this in your bag or stick it in your back pocket, you're not likely to damage this fiber. And you've got plenty of fiber in the system to provide a, a very bright reference point. Let's see if we can, yeah, you can see how bright that is um, right there. So great work on that. And of course, this will work for right or left hand hold. Simply just move the, the clips to the opposite side. Yes, that's, that was another very important point so to keep up the ergonomics and still um, make it ambidextrous. Uh, one yeah. one other thing that comes to the mind uh, that may, people may ask why cleaver. Uh, the cleaver was um, I really like blade sports, uh, for example, and I like those type of uh, handles and uh, those blades with a lot of uh, precision and control, and um, and also the overall shape reminded uh, to a kind of a cleaver handle, and all the yeah, dynamics. Absolutely. So. And also there's a there's some decent weight to it, and that adds a lot. The other very uh, significant element is the the thumb area, because that is not a simple surface. It's not just a, a kind of a flat, uh, one directional yeah, cut. It is quite a complex stuff, and uh, that was, uh, yeah. So that, that was uh, a fairly interesting experiment. I was not able to do it in, in CAD. Uh, I was uh, uh, creating uh, models and with files. Uh, I was uh, creating that. And uh, once I had the right uh, model uh, with, with just a piece of wood, then I uh, uh, get a 3D print and I just send it. And uh, going back and forth until I I was completely able to recognize how the file is oriented when I made that curve. And then I've tried to recreate it in 3D. And uh, that was that was quite of a long, long journey on it because it, it it's, it's really feels, even if there's a tiny, tiny thing off, it really feels because you have so much load on that finger. And yeah. uh, that was quite a crucial thing. And of course, that leads to a repeatable grip which is the slingshot's gotten spades. There's so many yeah. points of contact to um, let the shooter know they're properly engaged. So Mark, you'd not get out of the park again. Um, even though this is uh, one of your, not necessarily your newest design, it's definitely one of your coolest designs in my opinion. And I know there's lots of people out there that are looking forward to, um, to getting this design. But one thing I wanted to mention is um, lots of folks I'm sure are gonna ask, uh, are you gonna offer it in plastic? And um, I can answer that. No, we did not design. You did not design this to be in yes. plastic. This is a. This was designed to be a metal slingshot, very purpose built. So no, it will not be available in plastic. It'd be. Uh, we did spend some time looking at some iterations that could have gone that way, but they weren't the cleaver. Um, so. Yeah, that was a different route. Um, yeah. It's. Uh, yeah, we they had. Lost, a, we had lost a, the spirit. Yes. Yeah. Originally, uh, the the spirit that comes with the original sketch uh, that was transformed too much, and uh, and even the functionality and another thing, it's a different uh, different uh, feeling and a different result. It doesn't mean it's uh, bad or it's just not this one. And uh, I, I receive requests uh, quite a lot, and uh, it is it is hard to say people that it's not available now or just because I had so many other things going on and I wanted to make it in quality as expect and because this whole thing is not working if you if you don't do it the right way and uh, I made a couple uh, CNC versions with a five axis and that is that's great but it's quite expensive for this market so it was really a, a, a time for the production and for uh, for you to add simple shot to to make it to make it out and work it out it's it's um a lot of work in behind yeah yep yeah, but very well worth it well mark we are super excited to see what comes out of that slingshot addled brain of yours next um the cleaver <laughs> is awesome i can't wait for um folks around the world to have an opportunity to get their hands on it it's uh almost legendary status and it's not even really out there for how many are out there mark there's very oh. few cleavers in the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I don't want to tell. Yeah. Only, only a few. Only a few. Only so a few. It's not, not, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So this yeah. is the stuff of legends and myths, um, but no longer. Uh, it is available. So Hopefully. yeah, we really appreciate. We really appreciate you, Mark. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to share about the cleaver before we we part? 
Um, uh, it's it's honestly it's a piece of my heart, and uh, I'm I'm very excited. I wanted this moment to happen for quite a long time because I, I feel people like it, and I hope uh, you, um, all of you who watch this, you will enjoy uh, as I do making it. Well, thank you so much, Mark. We we really love working with you, and uh, thanks for everything you do for the Slingshot community. You are a cornerstone and pillar of our sport, and we're really glad to have you with us at Simple Shot. Thank you very much, Nathan. Thanks. All right, man. I'll see you in a few weeks in Italy. See you. <laughs> Be <laughs> All <right>. prepared. <laughs> All right. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. We'll see you soon.